Eichem, it's a cover on Shepard here from King David's tomb, kingdavidkabla.com. And we are in our series of reincarnation 101. We are in the Zohar of Vayichi, page 219a. We spoke yesterday, last week actually, spoke last week about the concept of the lower Gan Eden and the upper Gan Eden, Gan Eden Tachton and Gan Eden Elyon. And we explained that in the beginning, the soul, when it leaves this world, it goes to the lower Gan Eden. And then there is a process that we're going to speak about today of the elevation from the lower Gan Eden to the upper Gan Eden. Obviously, for those souls that are worthy to go to this high level of the upper Gan Eden. So the Zohar is telling us that there is four pillars. Okay, Arba Samchin. Samchin is a pillar that is holding something. What is those four pillars that uh, Zohar is speaking about here? Is actually the four angels. We have four angels that are main, uh, let's say, the major categories of the angels. Each one of them is in charge of a whole army, a whole camp of angels that are under him, and those four angels are Gavriel, Michael, Raphael, and Uriel. And the Zohar explains that those four angels are actually in charge of putting the garment on the soul that comes to the lower Gan Eden. And that garment, we know, is made from the mitzvot, from the whatever is the positive deeds that we had in this world. So those positive deeds and positive words that we speak, Torah, prayers, so on, blessings, and even thoughts, all of those are becoming to be the garments of the soul that according to those garments, that is the permission that the soul will have to enter the higher and deeper chambers of Gan Eden, of the Garden of Eden. In other words, like we know in this world, some places you cannot go with sandals and t-shirt. You have to have a certain, certain level of garments that it shows dignity, it shows honor, and then they give you the permission to go into certain places. Also in the heavens, there is spiritual garments that are allowing those souls to enter spiritual places in the upper worlds. So this action, this act of putting the garments to the soul, that brings a tremendous joy to the soul. And that joy is actually the reward that the soul is receiving for those good deeds that the person did in this world. That it comes to the upper world, it receives those garments that is showing the respect, the dignity of this person in the upper world. And then according to that, the person, the soul is able to enter those higher chambers that is a great pleasure to be able to go into those chambers with the righteous people that are there. But still, we are talking about the lower Gan Eden, which is in a way, even though it is pleasurable, but it is a waiting room, waiting station for the, the souls that are worthy to go to the higher Gan Eden. So they are waiting there in the lower Gan Eden until the time comes for them that they have the permission to go from the lower Gan Eden to the upper Gan Eden. And what is the way, what is the, the path of the connection, of the elevation between the lower Gan Eden and the other Gan Eden? So the Zohar explains that there is another pillar besides of the four pillars which is the four angels that we spoke about before. There is another pillar that is the connection between the lower Gan Eden and the upper Gan Eden. And that pillar is actually called Machon Har Tzion. Okay? As if 
today they, they explain Mahon as like an institute. So it's like the Institute of Hartzion. In a way, it is connected to King David's Kabbalah, the King David the tomb, right? It is in Hartzion, Mount Zion. Anyhow, the, the, the real understanding of the word Mahon in the, in the Torah, in the Tanakh, is, is a, a settling, settling place. Let's put it this way. A place to be settled. Okay, so the, so Mahon Hatzion is a certain spiritual location that the Zohar is referring to. And on that, it says that we have the, the Pasuk in the Torah, Anan Yomam, right, the pillar of the cloud, that was resting in front of the camp of Am Israel when Am Israel were traveling the desert. <clears throat> so that pillar of cloud, Amud Anan, even though we're not in the desert now, but in a certain way we can explain that this world is like the desert and the uh, the pillar of cloud that is standing in front of the camp of Am Israel in the desert is the pillar that stands in front of this world. What is in front of this world is Gan Eden. The lower Gan Eden is in front of this world in the structure of the worlds. So whatever is in front of this world, the closer to this world is the lower Gan Eden. And there is the pillar of cloud that is the pillar that through that there is an elevation, there is a possibility for elevation of the souls from the lower Gan Eden to the upper Gan Eden. And what happens when the soul have that permission to move from the lower Gan Eden to the upper Gan Eden? That for sure is a tremendous, tremendous joy for the soul, whoever is the person that is worthy enough that is all of the good deeds, good words, good thoughts that he had in this world joins together to give him that possibility that his spiritual garments of his soul is in such a high level that he have the permission to move to the upper Ganet and that's, that's a tremendous, tremendous joy for the soul. And that that transformation is also part of the reward of the world of truth. And coming in to the upper Gan Eden, the Zohar says that this is called Pitcha de Tzedek, the opening of Tzedek, of righteousness, of, of justice, meaning the, the justice is, justice of Hashem is that those that did those good deeds, that followed the Torah and created those spiritual garments for their soul, they are, according to the justice, according to the tzedek, they are worthy to move to the upper Gan Eden. And that is actually called also Sion Virushalayim. Okay? We have two words that are connected, Zion and Yerushalayim. Some people think that it's the same thing, that Zion is Yerushalayim. And sometimes it is referred in this way. But actually, the Zion is the pillar that brings to Yerushalayim. So Yerushalayim is the opening for this upper Gan Eden. The upper Yerushalayim is connected with the upper Gan Eden, the connection between the lower Gan Eden and the upper Gan Eden. And this is also the Sfirot of Yesod and Malchut. The Zion is connected to the Sphira of Yesod, and Yerushalayim is connected to the Sphira of Malchut. And whoever is the person that is worthy to go into the higher Gan Eden, so the Zohar is calling that Idabak Begufa de Malka is connected to the, the king, okay? So the Zohar is uh, using the term of goof, body, but 
it's very important for me to explain whenever we speak about the concept of body in the Torah, in the Zohar specifically, we have to understand that it's not giving us any description of what we know as physical body. Okay, we are using, I always say that, but it's very important for me that no one will make this mistake when he's listening to my classes. We are not talking about physical in the spiritual realms. Okay, we have to learn to let go of the physical understanding, the physical attachment, and to open our mind to grasp the abstract concepts that the Zohar is talking about. When we're coming to learn Kabbalah, we have to understand the physical words are coming to give us hints, a parable, that through that we can understand the true meaning, which is the spiritual concept. Okay? So there is a concept of as if body in the heavens, but it is spiritual, abstract concept. For example, as we know from the meditation of the Merkava that I explain in different classes, the right arm is connected to the chesed. So when we speak about the right arm in the Zohar, the right arm of the king, for example, so for us, we are attached to the physical manifestation of that, so it's easy for us to imagine a physical hand floating in the heavens, maybe, something. But it's, it's, it's a big mistake, okay? People are doing those kind of paintings of, the, of hand in the heaven, coming out of the sky, and then they are coming to the, they understand the Zohar in this way. But it's a big mistake, okay? It's not about a picture of a hand that is floating in the clouds. The, the right hand of the king that the Zohar is talking about is the Sfirah of Chesed. The whole concept of the Sfirah of Chesed is called many times in the Zohar the right arm of the king. But there's no shape of physical hand, okay? It's a I don't want anyone to do this mistake. So to be connected to the body of the king, what does it mean? It means that the soul goes back to its source, where it came from. Each one of us, our soul came from a certain location of the spiritual realms. And we are taking all of those spiritual realms and we are using the parable of a physical body, like the physical body, have different parts. Some of them are higher, some of them are lower, some of, are, some of them external, some of them internal. So in the same way, we have the structure of the spiritual realms that some of them are higher, some of them are lower, some of them are inside, some of them are external. All of that is a description of the spiritual realms. So when we are talking about coming uh, up, going back to the original place where the soul came from and to be connected to this place within the spiritual realms, the Zohar is using this term to be connected to the body of the king. And when we are learning, when we are praying, when we are meditating, all of those different things that I'm teaching, all of those are in a way a preparation for us that we will be able to go back to the place where we came from in the spiritual realms. And some people are asking, so why, 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 why bother? Why bother? We, like we already came from there, so why we have to go back to the same place we came from? And if Hashem wants us to be there in that original place, so why we had to do such a big tour into this world and all of this craziness and suffering that people are going through in this world, it is a very good question. And it is a whole different class that uh, I think I explained it in different classes, but I'll just say in short that the biggest pleasure is to be where we belong to. Like we know that in this world, that, like they say, there's nothing like home. 
when you're home, you feel good with yourself. You can, you can express yourself. You can, you feel comfortable. So in the same way, also in the spiritual realms, when we are going back to the place where our soul came from, this is a tremendous pleasure. It, the soul goes back to the place where it belongs to, and the reason that we had to go down is because of the sins, the sin of the Adam Arishon and the, and the, like different things that were happening in the the whole process of the creation, uh, what I call spiritual prehistory of this world, which is maybe another set of classes that we will do maybe another time. But just to have this concept that when we are going back to the same place, we are not the same like we were when we came down to this world. When we are completing our tikkun and we get back to, it, to, to the place where our soul came from, we, came, we come there with value, with new value. Okay, the value that we gain in this experience that we had in this world. All of those experiences that we are going through, the good ones, the less good ones, all the pain and suffering, it all becomes to be worth it. It all becomes, it all gets the meaning when the soul is in this process of the elevation to the upper realms, the lower Ganeden, the upper Ganeden, all of that becomes to be meaningful, all of that makes sense. So we will finish with that point for today to just to tune our mind and heart in our prayer, in our meditation, whenever we speak to our friends, family, that all of those things that are taking place now will have tremendous, tremendous meaning in future to come when we will be in those spiritual realms. So whatever it's easy for us to, to brush under the, the carpet now and to ignore it and to play as if we don't know, we don't see, we don't understand all kinds of different things, we will regret each one of those things very much because we will miss those spiritual parts that are so important for the soul, for the journey of the soul into the upper realms. Okay, everything that, whatever it is that we are skipping, whatever it is that we are like too lazy to do, when it comes, when the time comes, of the reward that the angels are putting those garments and we see something is missing there, there's a, there's a missing button as if, again, we're not talking about physical, we're talking about spiritual, but for us to have like the concept, imagine yourself like you have, a, you have a very important event, you want to be perfect, you want to have like nice like clothes, everything, and all of a sudden you, are, you, you, you understand like that you can't use this shirt because it's, it has a stain. You can't use this code because it, it missing a, it, it's missing a, a, like a, whatever, a, a thread, a, a button, whatever it is. So, like, it, it, it doesn't feel right. You can't go into this big event with, with, a, with a shirt that is stained and, like, a code with no button, right? So it, you, feel, you feel the pain of that. So that is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit that we'll be able to understand about the way it works in the upper realms. Ezrat Hashem, Hashem will help us all to really complete all of our tikkunim, to do all what it needs, all what it takes to be worthy to the lower Ganet and to the upper Ganet and to connect to the place where we, are, where we came from and to have the joy of the revelation in this world, in the upper world. Ezrat Hashem soon. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. Please visit our website, kingdavidkabbalah.com. Help us, support us to be able to continue with those classes and all of the other projects that we're doing. We will bless you wherever you are, wherever you are, with all of the blessings of the Torah, to be strong and healthy and happy to serve Hashem for many, many years. Thank you very much. 
ברכה והצלחה.